Hi everyone, welcome again to the course of structural biology. We are going through molecular dynamic simulation and today we are going to discuss about the molecular dynamic simulation process. I have divided the whole process description part into two classes. So, today is part 1. When we have started discussing about molecular dynamics, I told molecular dynamics is a process which is helped by computer simulation and what is happening is we are looking the phenomenon, the parameters which are being taken care by a real experiment. So, we have a real system and we develop a model system. Then the model system is undergoes simulation by taking care of their microscopic properties. Now, what is our goal here? Our goal is to develop a model system from our understanding of the real system. That is the first goal. You have experimental system, you develop a model system. Then you apply computer simulation. For long time, people are dreaming to develop systems, model systems out of experimental system, but the dream actually started coming true with the advent of computer because now you have huge ability to process the data. You will assume a lot of hypothesis and do the calculation according to that. So, that is where the computer simulation is coming. Then you perform an experiment, you perform a simulation, you compare these two data and develop more realistic model. Though this is a like never ending process, more you are exploring better model system will develop, but once we get good results from simulation, then we use this simulation to perform experiments which are problematic. I had explain what I mean by problematic. In your common sense, you could understand that if you have to perform the experiment in real life, it will take time, it will take money, it will take manpower, it will take risk, a lot of things. But if you could have a good model, realistic model system, you could perform simulation. And I talked about that when you compare the experimental systems in vivo, which is inside the body, if we consider what we are talking about a protein, you will see that in in vivo, there are mixture of proteins. In vitro, if you have done correctly the protein purification, still you get your protein in million copies. Whereas, in in silico, which is the model system, you could have choose the number of protein molecule according to your choice. That is the best thing for this experiment. We will explain in many cases why that is advantageous. But just to tell you a very important thing, as I told, when we are developing a model system, we have to mimic an experimental system. In case of molecular dynamic simulation, we do not mimic in vivo. Our technological improvement unfortunately did not reach to the level where we could deal with so many components. So, what we do, we mimic in vitro condition. Okay. So, because in in vitro condition, even not 100 percent, the protein could be pure more than 95 percent. So, you have a major 
portion of your protein behaving in a similar or identical way. Now, you perform experiment using that we say pure protein. So, if you look at this, this we are called pure protein. and the data would be compared with the simulation result where as I repeatedly talk about the number. So, this is the macroscopic system and this is the microscopic micro scale and then you have the coordinates. So, that when you are performing simulation, you are actually control the mass, the position and then what you do? You apply the force field. In the previous class, we have talked about different components of the force field. So, by having this bonded and non-bonded interactions, six parameters we have talked about, you develop your force field equation. So, the force field equation will help you to develop the force field, you have the protein molecule, you apply force and you see the changes. So, coming to the process now, the major steps where I have finished yesterday, there are three major steps. One, build realistic atomistic model of the system to simulate the behavior of your system over time using specific conditions temperature pressure volume etc and three analyze the results obtained from md and relate to macroscopic level properties so first you make the initial sample if you compare it with the experiment as we have discussed. In your experiment, you need sample preparation. Here also we are preparing the sample. Now, you would be little surprised because in the last class I have already told getting the system means getting it from the experimental structures. So, what else I would explain today? What more you have to do once you are getting the coordinates, the PDB file. So, the first step we already talked about get a valid protein structure that is all what we are studying in the structural biology course, how to get our journey from the sequence of which we get in huge amount millions and trillions with the advent of NGS our journey from this sequence to structure. Now, we have structure initially we told that once we get structure, we could understand function, but when we start getting structure, we see that not always structure is giving us the function. So, we want to introduce dynamics as I told pictures could be incomplete pictures could be wrongly projected. So, we are going for dynamics. So, we need to get the valid protein structure which is the outcome of a structural biology technique. Now, we are all aware of the fact that the experimental structures could be obtained by using protein crystallography, NMR, cryo electron microscopy. At the same time, we also know that the number of structures we have obtained which is deposited in PDB is 1,70,000 only and even it is not representing 1,70,000 unique proteins because there are important proteins which are having their structure in multiple forms with substrates, inhibitors in different organisms and all these things. So, around 30 to 40 thousand unique proteins we have. What else? We always talk about this bridge. Here, we are including the 
theoretical structures which we have solved using modeling studies. This course is not the best place, but as it is connected, I keep saying about those there are majorly three techniques one homology modeling, two fold recognition and the last one is ab initio. Now, ab initio is mostly applied for small peptides. Fold recognition is still away from success, like it is not a proven method for the situations when it is needed. Homology modeling is established technique, especially when the percentage of identity is more than 40 percent. But very interestingly, now there are combination of techniques. And why I am talking about this combination of techniques in this juncture of the course? Because if you look at and I will probably introduce a small part as a case study, there are two programs called Rosetta and ITASER. They are program packages and if you see or if you give a detailed look to that, you will find that that is the, the package is a proper culmination of domain modeling, ab initio, fold recognition as well as energy minimization, statistical analysis. So, when we are studying MD simulation, you will see that how molecular dynamic simulation is also taking a very critical role in theoretical solution of the structures. Especially now you all know alpha fold suddenly it got a very interesting success and we are all looking forward. If you look one of the biggest help they got is through simulation, we will talk about that. The second step is structure repairing. Now, this is where you could take a lot of help from people like me who have solved structures by directly by their hand also work on theory. You know from the theory of crystallography you know the first structure came around in 1960s hemoglobin, myoglobin other structures. Think about if you are a scientist, a crystallographer working in 1960, do you have any idea how computational biology would be becoming a very, very critical contributor to your field? No, right? That is what happened. So, it is not always people did not do their work correctly, but if you look at a coordinate file, if you look at a MTZ file, they are huge file. So, when people have got the electron density, especially I am talking about X-ray crystallography because that contribute to nearly 90 percent of the structures. And as a crystallographer, I know when you are you know at the last stage solving sometime you get the answer of why you are doing that, you might ignore the proper building of each and every atom. But after 2000, when computer is becoming so essential in biology, when they are doing amazing job, 
we start finding gradually that the ignorance of the X-ray crystallographers is affecting the computational studies. If you are taking a PDB file and you have no idea about actual technique, you consider this as a 100 percent correct structure. Unfortunately, this is not the case. So, and I will keep discussing about that. I talked about this before. So, whenever this is my sincere request to all of you who are working in this field, research purpose especially, you have to perform structure repairing. You have to identify missing residues, missing atoms. You have to correct the wrongly modeled residues or groups if they are present in the structures you want to work. You have to take care of the protonation states of the different amino acids because when it was structures in crystallo condition and what you are trying to develop in, in your system might be different. So, you have to take care of that. You have to correct the rotamer conformations. Unfortunately, like in crystallographic structures, there are multiple rotamers, but in the representative PDB structure going for simulation, you have to provide only one conformation. So, you have to take care of that. Definitely, you have to take care of the steric classes because if somehow there is steric classes your program will not run. Here is two examples just to show you uh, because we are not doing any practical here, but you have to do hands on to understand it better. This is the could representation which we have discussed in the last module. You see the model, the yellow blue color is the model you could see. The clouds are called electron density you already know. So, these are electron density, these are models, these are water. Now, when you see green like that, you understand that there something should be modeled, should be modeled which is not actually modeled. So, just to give you an idea and as I have already discussed in the visualization class, we have made these color combinations like traffic light. So, when you see green light that means, you should go, you should do something like in the traffic light you are allowed to go. When you get red light that means, you are not allowed to go in structure solution, you have put some atom in that density where you should not put it and yellow is the in between. So, when I have taken care, I have take a zoom and I see there are water molecules, we have cleaned the water molecule and we have successfully modeled a phosphate. Now, when you run a refinement, you will see this, this green density disappears. Another very critical thing is repairing of missing residues. In many cases, because of experimental restrictions, problems, you could not model some residue, but when you are going for simulation, you have to model it. So, if you see here an example, the residue methionine 17 is missing. It using in silico modeling, we have 
modeled it, repaired that and now we take help of CUT, you know in the program CUT it is not only a visualization program as I always say, it is also a program by which you could do real experiments. So, what we did, we did refinement. But its refinement means I have already explained many times. Refinement is when you have the atoms, you made a change. So, based on the already established library, you push it towards energy minimization that is called refinement. So, here you see the methionine 17 is appeared, whereas it was not appeared here. So, this is called repairing of missing residue. In such a way, there are a lot of repairing and it is always important to take a very careful look of your structure, so that the initial structure you are making, you make it really flawless. The third step is cleaning structure preparation, you delete hydrogens you delete solvents, you delete other things probably coming from like in crystallography, it comes from crystallography. So, you just check it out, you just delete them out. Now, you have a clean dot PDB structure. So, you have a realistic atomistic model of the system ready to go for simulation. The second step is simulate the behavior. So, what you have to do in the process of simulation, you have to calculate the forces in a force field. So, what you have to do, you have the model, you have to keep the model in the force field and you have to put force, so that the atoms move from one point to other point and if you see there is a spring model which is showing you how the force would be deforming the structure. So, now you do that and this process you iterate when you have anything iterating this needs a computer algorithm to perform that iteration and you integrate with the laws of motion. So, here we use Newton's second law to calculate the acceleration on each atom and if you look at you are allowing the stretching by considering classical physics, but you are not considering the bond breaking. So, the study of breaking and making of bonds are not possible in this scenario. Then now you should have a question. So, how I would study a enzyme when it is taking care of a reaction, biochemical reaction? Classical MD simulation as I told is obeying the Newtonian physics, it is only about the movement. Anything else you need to do, you have to set up specialized treatments, we will talk about that. So, coming to the algorithm from atom i, Newton's equation of motion is given by F i equal to m a, where m is the mass and a is the acceleration. Acceleration is, so with the time it is d 2 r, r is the distance d t 2. Here r i and m i represent the position and mass of the atom i and F i t is the force on the atom at time t. Now, this acceleration could also be expressed as the gradient of the potential energy which is F i equal to minus del i v. So, del i v equal to m d 2 r i t d t 2 that means 
the potential energy V with the help of Newton's equation of motion can then relate the derivative of the potential energy to the changes in position as a function of time. Now, if you see you are in a situation where you put a force there would be a change and measure the change with respect to time. And when you put a force like you have a ball you throw a ball it would go and it would come back. So, it would create a trajectory we have to calculate the trajectory to obtain the movement of the trajectory of atom. There are numerous numerical algorithms which are developed for integrating the equations of motions. There are Verlet algorithm which is a fundamental and the first algorithm in this field, Verlet velocity, leapfrog there are many algorithms. So, as it is an introductory course I will just give an example of Verlet algorithm. The algorithm uses the positions and accelerations at time t and the position from the previous step r t minus del t to calculate the new positions. So, r t plus del t equal to 2 r t minus 2 r t minus del t plus del t 2 a t. So, you have a current position to get the next position you have to calculate the change from the previous position. Now, this would also help you to select the time step. The time step del t is approximately one order of magnitude smaller than the fastest motion. So, for hydrogen if you consider the diatomic molecule the spring it is 10 femtosecond. So, time step is one tenth of that is 1 femtosecond. So, remember I was talking about this is the time scale of protein motion where bond stretching is around femtoseconds which I talked about, the elastic vibration is around nanosecond, the alpha helix folding is a nanosecond microsecond, the beta hairpin folding is in the level of microsecond and protein folding in the level of millisecond to second. When we perform as I discussed in detail in the previous class, we are taking care of the unfolding of the protein. We mostly want to see the molecular interaction and what we do, we store every coordinates after 1 or 2 femtosecond, so that we could use them for minute analysis after the MD simulation is performed. So, as I talked about the experiments where we are, we want to simulate the behavior of we already have the build the realistic atomistic model of the system. Now, we want to simulate the behavior of the system. So, we develop a model system from our understanding of the real system. We have a clean PDB file. Now, we think that we would use that clean PDB file to simulate but that is not the real thing because you have the PDB file you could not use it for simulation. So, what you have now is PDB file what you want to prepare topology file and parameter file. So, we have already start the simulation part, but in this part we will not do the simulation at the first step we will prepare the file properly, so that it could be going under simulation. So, first we will consider the concept of topology and parameter file to do that as we have already told you consider a hydrogen diatomic molecule. In molecular dynamic simulation this molecule is modeled as two point masses definitely you could see two point masses connected by a simple spring. In this respect two sets of information are needed to simulate the hydrogen molecule. Okay. What are they? One atomic connectivity information. So, remember I told this spring 
if you put a force it would be expanded it could be contracted and then it come to the equilibrium position this equilibrium position is the bond length that will talk about the connectivity when you put a force it could not go beyond a distance it could not come lesser than a distance that is what we get here atomic connectivity. Another the spring stiffness and equilibrium. So, the suppose I am using a iron spring whereas, you are using a normal elastic rope. So, they would have their stiffness variable so, that would be the two factors one to tell the MD program that one atom is bonded to other because if you look at a system like this where this is bonded this is non bonded suppose A's are bonded B's are bonded and C's are bonded. So, there are some bonding information and some non bonding information. We have to tell the program that these are connected you cannot put them miles apart right. So, that is what atomic connectivity and second is the spring stiffness and equilibrium. So, if we wish to simulate a more complicated molecule the M D force field will come in two parts topology file parameter file. The topology file defines which atoms are connected to one another through chemical bonds. So, what it will talk about bonds we already know bonds means two atoms connected, angles three atoms connected, dihedrals four atom connected. For dihedral there are two things proper and improper dihedral. When we are talking about we are talking about proper dihedrals. So, if you have a complete list of two atom bonds the angle and dihedral information may be inferred. So, if you have a library with the bonding connectivity your angles and dihedrals would be computed. So, angle and dihedral information is extraneous and it could be omitted from the library because it could be calculated with the already established information of connectivity. Given a complete atom list and set of bonds different programs like PSF gen is a uh, program from uh, one uh, simulation package uh, which is NMD is able to construct the correct topology for the molecule. However, as I was talking about improper angles which are used to retain chiral and planar centers must be specified explicitly. The parameter file quantifies the variables which are used in the force field potential energy. It gives parameters such as the stiffness and equilibrium parameter is stiffness and equilibrium value of an angle between three atoms etcetera. Now, this would be differentiating the force fields. The force field contains topology and parameter information for the standard 20 amino acids, lipids, nucleic acids and some other organic molecules. If you remember when we are talking about the PDB file I have shown you there is a atom portion and there is a heteroatom portion. The atom portion atom which is present in the dot pdb file are actually known information. So, these are there in the force field. 
and using them one can simulate any protein, any DNA or molecular systems which are composed of this basic building blocks. So, all the biological macromolecules coming from protein DNA and RNA could be simulated. And these parameters when you go to theory they have different like changes they have different contributors which gives us different force fields. There are two very essential elements which are there in the force fields. One the set of equation called the potential functions used to generate the potential energies and their derivatives the forces. If you remember we talked about the components and their equations the stretching, bending, dihedral, van der Waal, Coulombic hydrogen bonds. They are same, but their contribution factors constants are changing according to the theory people have developed. And there are the parameters used in this set of equation. Within one set of equation various set of parameters could be used. What are they? Uh, we have to take a very close look to the individual force fields. Here I am not going into that, but what I am talking about that care must be taken that a combination of equation and parameters form a consistent set. So, you need a equation and related parameters. It is in general dangerous to make changes in a subset of parameters by your own because the various contributions to the total force are usually interdependent. So, you are changing one thing without understanding that this change could affect other calculations where you could not change. So, this means in principle every change should be documented verified by comparison to experimental data and published in a peer reviewed journal before it could be used. So, I talked about that you wanted to simulate a system that contained a molecule not described in the topology and parameter file of the force field you are using. You understand? So, before I told you have the atom data in the PDB about 20 amino acids, about nucleic acids, about lipids and all. But if someone or some system, some molecule do not have that, it would seems that you have to build the entire set of parameters if they are not matching, but that is not the actuality and which is a very relieving factor. There are wide variety of natural and non-natural amino acids and other molecules that can be simulated by piecing together parameters already in a programs parameter set. This is very interesting. Suppose there is suppose you need this part from one molecule and rest of the part from B molecule, these are all standard standard A, standard B, standard C. By having parts from these, these, this, you get a molecule D whose parameter was not there. This is also helping you. So, you are restricted only by the bond angle, improper and dihedral angles already available, not by rigid conformers of how they formed. This is the list of force field present in Gromax. I take Gromax as an example as I told uh, in this introductory course I am just talking about or showing you the force field 
hopefully in future we will get opportunity where I will take a course, I will describe all the program packages, their force fills and all. So, you will see that there are majorly Amber, Charm, Gromos, OPLSA. How they work is difficult to explain, but if you ask me how you should select them, I would say one go through extensive literature searching to understand what is good for your protein and then do trial and error. So, I talked about this if someone wish to study a protein macromolecular system involving non natural amino acid, it may be possible to run simulation using existing parameters for the standard amino acids. If you could do this, you will save much effort in not being forced to develop new parameter for your system, right. So, I have taken an example, you all know about lysine, a natural amino acid, and ornithine, and non natural amino acid. If you compare, you will see this, this part is the extra part present in lysine. So, if you take this out, the parameter of this part out, you use the rest of the parameter for ornithine. You do not need to develop a entirely new system of ornithine. This is an easy system to demonstrate, but as I told in the earlier slide, you could make pieces from very different systems, make them together and still apply them towards a successful simulation run. So, what if you have molecule with entire new chemistry? In those cases, we have to develop from scratch, just like the boron compounds as if you see in the literature are becoming popular, uh, especially as a transition state analog mimicking compound. So, boron chemistry is not definitely there in the parameter, so you have to develop your own. Coming to solvation and solvation models. Biological activity is the result of interaction between molecules and occurs at the interface between molecules, you know protein, 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 DNA, protein, solvent, DNA, solvent. So, these are normal system we are looking for. Most of the biological processes occurs in aqueous solution. You know if you look at the cytosol, it mostly aqueous. So, that is why the biological macromolecules interact in aqueous solution. Solvation effects play crucial role in determining molecular conformations, electronic properties, binding energies, etcetera. There are two type of models, explicit solvent model and implicit solvent model. Explicit solvent models are actually real model like you have hundreds and thousands of water molecules or solvent molecules, they are explicit solvent model. They are most widely used method for carrying out simulation in solvent because they are realistic, but because they are many in number, so computationally expensive. Implicit solvent is a model actually, it treats solvent as a continuous medium and the average properties of the real solvent. So, it is a calculated thing and surrounding the solute beginning at the Van der Waals surface as you have seen here. Because this is already a calculated model, the computational complexity is much less, so much less time is required. Examples of explicit solvent model, there are two type of explicit solvent model, fixed charge model where the solvents are charged, but it is not considered that this charge influence others like SPC, SPCE, TIP 3P, TIP 4P, TIP 5P, ST 2 and all. Polarizable water models or charge models are where they are charged, but they influence others TIP 4P, FQ, Pol 5, MCDHO are the examples. Implicit solvent models as I told they are generally coming from the development of the theory. So, poison Boltzmann solver which is under the program Delphi by Barry Honing, generalized bond model still 
Carplus, you know Carplus, he is the we could say heart of MD simulation and its uh, further proceedings. He is a Nobel laureate, his EEF1 model and Benoit Raux from University of Chicago spherical solvent boundary potential SSPP model. If you look at how the differentiation happened, this is the water model geometry where if you see you will see that they have considered the distances, the charge, the charge is fixed or polarizable and considering those many factors they have included in the model and depending on the differentiation like sigma is depending on the solvent ch surface charge, epsilon is dielectric constant, the distances, the charges, the angles depending on them you see there are differences in the model. So, coming to the flow of simulation program, as I told we already got the clean structure dot pdb, I named it as structure 1. So, the file is prot dot pdb which is protein dot pdb. Protein dot pdb converted to prot underscore process dot grow by the help of a command. So, I am taking Gromax program package as an example. So, pdb to gmx is a command which convert the pdb formatted one to Gromax competent format. Here we add hydrogen, we select the force field. I talked about the force field around 15 force field I have shown. You have to select the force field here and you have to select the solvent model like TIP 3 P, TIP 4 P, uh, SPC, any model you are going to use. So, that pdb to gmx command gives prot underscore process dot grow, the grow file is a gromax competent file having all the information. This is the main file which would be associated with posray dot itp and topol dot top. Postray dot itp is a very interesting and very critical file for the simulation to run. As I talked about your atomic connectivity information of the covalent bond have already told which atoms are being restricted to which length, but for non-covalent interaction there is no limit. A loop, a atom in a loop could you know be here and it comes it, it could you know even travel a huge distance, but at the same time you cannot like consider infinity as your simulation system. So, you put the restriction postray dot itp file contain the information about the positional restraints which are already given here. Topol dot top is a topology file. You see now from structure 1 to structure 2 the hydrogens are added. You might ask me a question in many structures we are downloading from pdb already hydrogens are added. So, why you have separately taken an initiative or why the program is separately adding it? There are many reasons, but if I have to tell you the most important one, if you look at among the three high resolution structural biology techniques, X-ray crystallography, NMR and cryo electron microscopy, up to now 90 percent of the structure is solved by X-ray and as we have already gone through the detail of the X-ray crystallography process, you now know very well X-ray could not diffract hydrogen. So, the protein structures, the 90 percent contributed structures are not having the information of hydrogen. Surprised? Yes, then from where the hydrogens are coming? The hydrogens are coming through theoretical calculation. 
So, different software have their different principle of calculations. Before simulation, we delete them and use a unified program to add hydrogen, which you are seeing here. The plot dot pdb had no hydrogen, plot underscore process dot grow have hydrogen. Now, you come to the next one where you have plot underscore new box dot grow with a common edit conf. Edit conf is taken care of conformation where it helps you to develop if you look at the structure 3 a box. So, it create a box and the box is created in such a way if you consider a sphere around your protein you will see a equidistance maintenance of the box. So, in the box the protein is kept in a centralized position. In the next step protein underscore new box dot grow is transferred to protein underscore solve dot grow by solvating it. So, we have already selected the solvent now you see from structure 3 to structure 4 your protein is solvated with water molecule. So, in this case we have selected TIP 3P water model. Topol dot top would be a associated file. Now, with this plot underscore solve dot grow ions dot mdp is added m dot mdp is a molecular dynamics parameter file by associating three files ions dot mdp plot underscore solve dot grow and topol dot top they make the file ions dot tpr by the comment grom pp. Grom pp would be a comment which would come when you have to merge files especially mdp dot grow and dot top. Dot grow as I told before is a file which is gromax competent. The dot tpr file is a extension stands for protable binary run input file. This file contains the starting structure of your simulation, the molecular topology and all the simulation parameters. So, that is why it merges everything and bring into a dot tpr file. And dot tpr file with the help of the command gen ion generation of ions comes into prot underscore solve underscore ions dot grow. Here, uh, remember I told we are actually mimicking the in vitro condition. So, we are developing a buffer and we add sodium and chloride to neutralize the whole system. Topol dot top would be updated as I say with changes topol dot top file keeps updating continuously. So, this is the prot underscore solve underscore ions dot grow file. If you look at this file have the protein, this file have water, this file have the there is a box, there are ions, ions. So, now we have successfully prepared the system for simulation. So, yes we need the pdb file, but the pdb file have to be processed properly to come to this dot grow file. So, today we have started with the understanding of the force field converting to algorithm and building a realistic atomistic model and further processing of the model towards simulation. In the next class, we will perform 
the rest of the part of the simulation process. Thank you very much for listening.